Hi guys, welcome back to our topic on how to create an inventory management dashboard. On our previous video, we have discussed a simple introduction and show a sample demo of this dashboard. We also tackled the advantages of using this interactive inventory dashboard, which is just a part of the whole inventory barcode system. Now let's begin. Just imagine, in order to track a million dollar investment and to support a rapid business demand, we used to do it manually. To accomplish a thousand of inventory, the owner or the person in charge needs to do the manual count and manually encode the parts quantity and other related data from a paper sheet to a spreadsheet. And this painstaking manual task must be repeated over and over again in a regular interval and sometimes needs to be repeated again if inventory discrepancy occurs. And since we are using a manual process, it requires a lot of repeated manual checks to reduce the potential occurrence of error, such as manually entering of serial numbers, quantity, date, and other related information that will definitely consume several hours per week depending on the size of your inventory. And therefore, it makes the system inefficient and time-consuming and requires more manpower resources, resulting to a huge cost needed to operate. Combining all of this makes it really painful in the long run. But with the use of a barcode, combined with the dynamic spreadsheets, on our inventory system, we can improve the error occurrences from 1 in every 300 keystrokes to 1 in every 1 million keystrokes. And also, we can improve the man hour requirements by up to 90%. Now, for the second part of this tutorial, we will discuss the overview of the complete inventory management system for us to have a clearer bird's eye view of this application and learn what our business can gain from it and what are the impacts. I have divided the whole system in a total of 7 parts. First is the asset or parts registration. This is where we input the parts information such as parts unique code the parts OEM or the parts OPM number, the location, the quantity, type, picture, cost, etc. And the information is arranged according to its cardinality. After a successful parts registration, next will be the barcode generation. For the barcode generation, this is where we generate the unique barcode for each parts registered and print it in a sticker label with the size depending on the requirements of the end user. The user can choose between 1D or the 2D barcode. For 1D barcode, also known as a linear code, which is usually a black and white pattern using a variable width lines and spaces for encoding information. That information such as numbers and other keyboard characters is encoded horizontally from left to right. 1D barcodes holds a limited number of characters, typically 20 to 25. In order to add ma more numbers, the barcode must be longer. The most familiar 1D barcodes are those common UPC codes found on grocery and other consumer items. A 1D barcode depends on database connectivity in order to have a meaningful result. After a scanner reads the number in the code, they must be linked back to the product or pricing date of the database in order to generate 
uh, useful information. When 2D barcode uses patterns, shapes, and dots to encrypt information both horizontally and vertically, it can encrypt more information in the same amount of space compared to 1D barcode. In addition to holding more data, 2D barcodes can encrypt images, website addresses, and other binary data, which means that the code can work independently with the database. Next thing we need to prepare is a barcode scanner that must be compatible with the printed label that we have prepared. For this tutorial, we will be using a smartphone instead of a traditional barcode scanner and a phone apps called OrcaScan. Now, let's check the next video courtesy of OrcaScan. OrcaScan makes it easy to build entire barcode solutions with no hardware or any coding using just a mobile app and a web-based spreadsheet. With the web-based spreadsheet, multiple users can collaborate in real time. They can scan directly into it. They can pull down information when they scan matching barcodes and they can make changes and send updates back. With the history log, we have the ability to fully trace what has been changed, when it was changed, and by whom. What's unique about the system is that it's all based on the spreadsheet that you're already familiar with. The columns are a direct mirroring of fields in the app, and simply by configuring these columns, we can control the fields across hundreds of devices. OrcaScan, the new way for tracking barcodes. Regarding ORSCAN, we will cover and discuss more on the succeeding part of this tutorial. You may visit their website on the link shown on the screen. After we have scanned and have the raw inventory data, next we need to do is to export the data. There are several ways of exporting the data. But for this tutorial, we will export it through an email, which makes the system more simple and it will serve as our cloud backup storage. Exporting our data through email gives additional security to our files from data corruption and makes it readily available anytime, anywhere. Next part is the data storage. After exporting the data, it needs to be stored in a specific location, either in a network or in a local drive. On this part, we will discuss what is needed on our data to be stored in order to work properly with the system. After successfully storing the data, the next part is to link the imported data to our inventory management database. On the later series of this tutorial, we will tackle on how we efficiently link the data between workbooks and doesn't need both files to be open at the same time. Take note that using VBA in Excel and use of macro code to link data between workbooks requires both files to be open and there are several techniques or ways to do it. Some of this is to include on your macro code to intentionally open the source file and then close it after updating the files which I think is not efficient on doing these things. Please watch out for the next series of this tutorial. Let's find how we do efficiently update the data in real time without opening both source file and the destination file. This is another great Excel tips and tricks that I've discovered along the way while developing this dashboard.
It is always a great thing that whenever you encounter the problem, there are always several solutions. But among these solutions, you can always opt to choose for the better one. After successful linking of data between imported inventory files and with the database, it is now need to be consolidated according to the specific requirements of the end user. Here, we will discuss how we properly consolidate the data in order to have a historical log of data either on the withdrawal of parts, deposit, and a time-based log of inventory stocks as well as generating perpetual inventory versus the scheduled inventory. Data consolidation is needed for us to generate a desired chart that will be displayed on our dashboard. And the last part of this system is a dynamic dashboard. Here, we can selectively filter a particular items such as user, date, type, cost, etc. In order to accomplish this, we have used an Excel BBA, data pipeting, and other Excel functions to dynamically control the data to be represented in a chart as per user needs. Now that we have discussed the overview, we are now ready to proceed on discussing more details on each part of this system. So don't miss the next part of this tutorial and please hit like and subscribe. And please feel free to comment regarding the video presentation that I've prepared. On the next tutorial, we will be discussing the first part of the system, which is the part registration. Thanks for watching guys.